Welcome to week six of Introduction to Linguistics. This week, we're going to study semantics, which is the study of meaning, pragmatics, the study of meaning in context, and we're gonna study a little bit of psycholinguistics, which is the science of how the language works in your brain. We're going to start our transition from syntax to semantics by studying semantic roles. So before we begin, let's just take a quick look at where we are now. We've studied phonetics and phonology, which to you was sound. We've studied morphology, which is the structure of words. Syntax is the structure of phrases and sentences. We'll start with semantics, which deals with the meaning of phrases and sentences. The literal meaning, like what does the word chocolate mean? Or what does the word house mean? Then we'll study pragmatics, the meaning in context. But let's transition from syntax to semantics by looking at the types of arguments that you need in a transitive verb. So here we have the sentence, Santa employed the reindeer. Santa is the subject of the sentence and the reindeer is the direct object of the sentence. This is subject and object are structural characteristics. We could also describe these words by the type of, by the relationship to the action. For example, Santa is an agent an agent is somebody who performs an action deliberately. So Santa does, you know, have agency. He deliberately employs the reindeer. He has made a decision to do this. And an agent is someone who deliberately, deliberately does the action and affects the object. There is some change in state in the reindeer. They were unemployed and now they are employed. So this is an agent, and on the other hand, this one is the patient of the sentence. This is someone who suffers the action, who receives the action of the verb. Who was employed? The reindeer. You think that all subjects are agents, but this might not be the case. Let's take a look at these two sentences. Santa employed the reindeer and the reindeer died. So um, are both of these agents or is one of them an agent and one of them a patient? The Take a moment to think about it. Please pause the video. So if you think about it, both of these are the subjects of their verbs, but they're not doing the same thing. Santa is an agent because he's deliberately performing the action, but the reindeer is more like a patient. The, what is the reindeer doing? Suffering the fact that they died. They didn't deliberately die. They didn't decide to die. It's just something that happened unto them. So even though these two are structurally the same, they are subjects, their meaning is different. One of them is doing an action and one of them is suffering an action. If you're studying a language like French and Italian, you'll know that this makes a difference in how you structure your language. For example, if we have sentences like Santa employed the reindeer in French, Le Père Noël a employé le renne, and in Italian, Babbo Natale a impiegato la renna. These sentences are performed by an agent. And in French and Italian, you need an auxiliary when you're constructing this verb. And you have the auxiliary avere or avoir. On the other hand, you can have a sentence where the patient is the subject, like in The reindeer died, or Le renne est mort, la renna est morta. If your uh, subject is a patient, your auxiliary is different. Your auxiliary is the verb uh, être or essere. So this is a difference that you see in some languages. If your subject is doing the action, you use certain constructions. But if your subject is suffering the action, you use a slightly different linguistic construction. In general, we call these thematic roles or semantic roles. There are several of them. For example, an agent is someone who is a deliberate doer of the action, someone who deliberately does the verb. Like in Anna eats pizza, she has decided to eat it. And also by doing so produces an affectation on the pizza. There was pizza and now there's no pizza. A patient is a sufferer of an action and there is a change of state by virtue of having suffered the action. 
and Anna eats the pizza, the pizza is a patient because it suffers the eating, and there's a change in state. There was pizza, and after it's eaten, there's no more pizza. We also have the role of theme, which is someone who undergoes an action or receives it, but there's really no change in state. They remain the same being that they were before. For example, when Anna arrives, or the glass is on the table, you can see that the action, yeah, it happens to Anna, but she remains the same Anna. And then the glass is on the table. The glass is just there. Nothing really is changing about the glass. So we call these themes because the glass is not deciding to be on the table. This is just a comment about the state of the glass, a continuous non-changing state. Another role is experiencer, which is someone who receives sensory or emotional input. For example, Susan heard the song, I cried. So these subjects are not choosing to hear. And quite frankly, they're not choosing to cry. It's just something that happens to them because of emotion, emotional or sensory input. Again, Susan doesn't choose to hear a song. It, the song just arrives in her ears. So these are all different types of subjects, depending on what kind of action and what is the relationship with the action. Let's practice for a little bit. Here are some sentences and here are some semantic roles. Please take a moment to label each of the words, each of the constituents with the correct uh, semantic role. Please pause the video. Let's check it out. Anna is an agent because she deliberately drinks her coffee. She chooses to put it up to her mouth and then swallow it. Anna drank. The coffee is a patient because the coffee suffers the action of being drunk and there's a change in state. There was coffee and now there's no more coffee. And Anna arrived at the library. Anna is probably a theme because Anna does receive the action of arriving. It relates to her. But there's no change in Anna. She remains the same person now that she's arrived. In Anna saw the children, Anna is an experiencer. She sees the children. She doesn't choose to have the visual information enter her eyes. The children here are probably the theme of this, uh, of this sentence because they're not really suffering the act of being seen. It's just something that they, they're receiving the action, but they're not suffering it, and there's no change in them by virtue of being seen. They remain the same children. Notice that this is very different from a patient, like a coffee, which does change after the action. After the coffee is drunk, there's no more coffee. In my pet puffy has died, this is a patient, because the poor puffy is receiving the action of having died, and there's a definite change in state. In the sentence, Anna ate the donuts, you have Anna as an agent, someone who does the action, and the donuts as the patient. They suffered the action, and now there's no more donuts. Let's practice some more. Here are more sentences. Please try to label each of those constituents with the correct semantic role. Please pause the video. Let's check it out. And Jenny swims. Jenny is probably an agent because she chooses to swim. And it's an action that she is, that has agency about, that she's choosing to perform. Mary felt happy is probably an, ex Mary is probably an experiencer, someone who receives some emotional information and then reacts to it. Uh, because feeling happy is not necessarily something that Mary chooses to do. It's something that might happen spontaneously. In the key sank right to the bottom, the keys are probably a theme. This one is more of a gray area. They might be a theme because they, they remain the same keys after they've, they've sunk. Um, they're not changing. They're just in a different position. One could say that they're a patient because they suffered the, the state of no, long, no longer being in reach. But the affectation there is truly not for the keys. It's for you who have lost the keys. So I'd say these are a theme. In the donuts were eaten by John, the donuts are a patient because they suffered the action of being eaten. So even if they are the subject of the sentence, they're the ones who are actually suffering the action. So subject is a structural syntactic description. 
and patient is a description about its meaning. We'll call that a semantic description. John is the one who's eating the donuts, so he is the agent. And Maggie pruned the roses. Maggie is an agent because she deliberately goes and prunes the roses. She chooses to do it. And the roses are the patient because they change state. The, some part of them has been removed. These are just a few examples of semantic roles. There's many of them. Here are some examples of more of them. A beneficiary is someone who benefits from the action of the verb, like in I give cookies to Anna, or I baked Anna a cake. And the goal is a location or entity towards where the action is moving or headed. For example, I'm going home, or I walk to school. There are many other semantic roles, like instrument, source, time, location, etc. But the ones that uh, I've been telling you about are sort of like the basic semantic roles. In summary, sentences not only demand certain structures, like having an, a noun phrase or a determiner phrase, they also demand that these structures mean certain things, that they have the capacity to exert agency, so they have the capacity to choose to drink coffee, for example. In the sentence, the coffee drank Anna, this coffee does not make sense because the subject, the coffee, does not have the agency to perform the action of drinking. The coffee cannot choose to drink. We're going to call these roles, agent, patient, and so forth, semantic roles. And in the next video, we're going to study a little bit more about meaning. How do we know that Anna is the type of being that can deliberately start an action and coffee is not?